Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily. Today we're going to talk about the changes, some of the features and also some of the fixes of patch 2.9.0. Patch 2.9.0 is the sixth step on the roadmap and the first iteration is the historical spreading of knowledge. Our tribes will at creation be granted all knowledges but with different levels of proficiency. If you are starting at the very early Mesolithic you are not likely going to have a lot of proficiency in all of your knowledges. Starting late Neolithic you will have a lot more. In order to achieve big improvements to our knowledges, we will need to rely on migrants. However, with practice and hard work, your tribe will improve their proficiency within each knowledge that you have. This in turn will grant them access to more objects that they can build. All knowledges are percentage based and if you do not practice the skill, you will slowly but surely lose it. And the further away from the Mesolithic into the Neolithic we are, your migrants will have less and less influence from the Mesolithic culture. And even though your tribe once knew, for instance, how to create a certain tool, if the skill is not being kept alive through the generations by using it in your everyday life, the level of this knowledge might drop so low that you will lose the ability to build some of the objects. You do have a few options though in order to get the level of knowledge back. The first and perhaps rather obvious one is that you let your members work on other lower level objects within that knowledge that will grant percentages towards the level you are lacking. Then you can also rely on migrants to bring back the knowledge or the level of the knowledges that you have lost. This however is not guaranteed. With the learning of new and improved skills we now also have performance based on knowledge. This in turn means that if for instance your fisherman has fishing skills they will catch fish quicker than those who do not. The efficiency of the fisherman will increase or decrease paralleled with their percentage based level of knowledge. This goes for every member in your tribe that has knowledge within the task that they are performing. The knowledges you are granted at the start is held by your specialist. These specialists will be responsible for teaching the rest of your tribe their skills. And even though they do not need to join any specific group to teach others, they do prefer to join the groups that corresponds with at least one of their knowledges. This means that they can improve their own skills by practice. If you lose one of your specialists early on, you might lose the knowledge altogether. You will then have to rely on migrants to bring it back to you. So treat your specialists well, at least at the start. Your tribe members will fairly quickly learn knowledges up to the point where your tribe has max overall knowledge and after that, the tribe must rely on migrants or improve the overall tribe knowledge themselves via practice. It is basically learning by trial and error and this process can be very slow. The game has two Atlantic culture requirements, Mesolithic and Neolithic. It also have nine different knowledges within these two cultures and if your tribe is lacking a few levels in these knowledges to build for instance certain objects that you would like, you might either be in the wrong timeline or just in need of migrants coming to your parts of Europe. If you have a certain knowledge but not enough skills in it, you can see the corresponding objects being laid out as you know they exist but you just do not quite know how to make them. The blue colour informs us about the current knowledge that your tribe has, the red means what you are lacking of knowledge while the green is the surplus of the knowledge in the tribe. The surplus means that you have more knowledge than you need to build this object. For cultural requirements you will never need both the Neolithic and the Mesolithic culture in any of your objects at the same time. If there is an item that you cannot find in the game that you know exists, it is because you as the player have the knowledge while your tribe does not. With the new knowledge system, we have also been given a way to keep a monthly tally of what has been learned or lost of knowledge above the tribe max overall. Every month, this system will show you a colorized increase or decrease of knowledges above max tribe level. You can, for example, pay attention to a new crafter who is now making ropes. If he has no skills in this knowledge, he will take a day or so to learn the knowledge on a rudimentary level. Then he will start to rapidly increase his skills till he reaches the max overall for the tribe. 
Blue is what you have for now. Green is what has been learned above the overall knowledge level in the tribe past month, while red is the level that you have lost. Everything that you either create or build that has a requirement will also give you learning when you're either maintaining or repairing the item. We also have our new detachable window with the knowledges so that we can still use the user interface while also keeping an eye on the progression of all our knowledges. A fun addition to the game are achievements on Steam. Simply by playing the game you will have your progress and achievements popping up as notifications while you are playing. At the moment we have 19 achievements we can work towards. Some are for the population, some for building, some for survival and last but not least some are for fame. You can find all your achievements both fulfilled and unfulfilled by going to your Steam library. The ultimate title is a legendary tribe. Have fun reaching it. All your achievements need to be done executively, meaning in the same game, otherwise they will start all over again when you start a new tribe. Your achievement milestones will however always show on Steam. And while we are on the subject of Steam, we now also have Steam Cloud. This means that your save games will be shared between all the computers where you play the game. You can opt out of this by going into your settings on Steam and tick the box off. An issue that has been sorted are the migrant groups that sometimes could show up after we enter the Neolithic era with no people in it. Patch 2.9.0 have no more empty migrant groups and we are very happy about that. Another fix that has been made with the migrants is that they at times could not enter the camp. This has been sorted and all your migrants will now make their way to you. Sometimes however, the migrants that you accept your tribe has no choice and this might cause them to chill out on the outskirts of the camp until it's meal time, sleep time or till a chore or a task is available, but they will all eventually enter your camp. With the game developing more and more content pertaining to both the Neolithic and the Mesolithic era, we now have cultural dependent clothing. This means that our tribe members' clothing will change depending on the culture your tribe belongs to. During the Ice Age, the clothing for our ancestors was above anything, serving as a necessary protection against a harsh environment. Hence, the Mesolithic clothing will reflect survival above fashion. As we get closer to the Neolithic era, the environment becomes less and less hostile and we can see that instead of only fur and leather coverings from head to toe, we can now find more variation in clothing, not only due to the environment becoming milder, but also due to that a sedentary lifestyle as farmers allowed more time to be used on non-food activities. While entering the Neolithic, we also noticed the various other types of clothing materials being used, such as finely woven textiles while using less and less furs or leather. There is also a lot more of the body showing without any clothing on it. And although our ancestors did not have so much time to focus on the fashionable side of clothing in the Mesolithic, something they both have in common is that you will find elaborate clothing both made from leather and textile, including accessories made of, among other things, animal teeth, bone, amber and shells in both cultures. In the Mesolithic, however, it was only normal to see these kind of things on leadership and otherwise prominent persons. Another addition to the game is a new plant species, the Allium root. This edible root can be found in the ground and, pending the temperature, will be available to harvest throughout spring until late autumn. The Allium root can also be found everywhere in Europe. Another new and exciting addition is the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse is a Neolithic construction with walls and thus a proper roof so that the space inside becomes much larger. This is allowing a lot more of the life in general to be done inside rather than outside. You will for instance see that people would choose to go inside for their meals and crafters will prefer to sit inside this house instead of seeking out either stones, logs or benches to sit on while performing their tasks. With this new building we also have a new resource, the mud. This commodity is a very common resource wherever you go. You will find it in large quantities in mud pits. 
and it is for now used to build your roundhouse floors, your walls and also your ovens. The roundhouse can sleep 8 people and with that has the highest capacity of all the houses and huts in ancient cities. 750 mud is needed to build a roundhouse and when looking at the size of the roundhouse it does make sense. Yet another object that we have got in this patch is the small men here. This men here is much smaller than the original one and it has no inscriptions or carvings. It does however have colourful handprints made by our ancestors. This technique is called spit painting and was done by placing their hand over the stone surface for them to spit paint or charcoal powder from their mouths or by using reed. Yet another feature we have in this patch is the cultural diversity in human characteristics. As the millennia went on, our ancestors' skin tones and eyes slowly started changing after migrating from the tropical Africa roughly 40,000 years ago. This made them better suited for surviving the climate in Europe's higher latitudes. And it would take another 20,000 years or so before the skin tone turned lighter in the majority of all areas in Europe. Amazingly, during the Mesolithic era, our ancestors in much of the Atlantic Europe had dark skin and bright blue eyes. It is a common stereotypical misconception that our early ancestors' hair was mostly left to its own devices, but they were, however, much more clever than that. Since the comb was not invented yet, they usually had dreadlocks, but with style, because they did invent ways to keep themselves groomed. They used, for example, sharp shells and flint blades to cut the hair, and they could also use hot coal from the campfire to singe it. They would also shape it and tie it up in knots. The result would be rather stunning. Even more features added in patch 2.9.0 is the adding of knowledge related notifications and also the improvement of our current ones. We will get the usual notification upon constructions that are completed, but now we will have them improved with icons of exactly what has been completed as well. The new notification system with icons will inform us upon every new object that we are granted access to due to increasing levels of knowledge in the tribe and also items we are losing due to a decline. This will certainly help us to keep a track of all new items we can create and also the ones that we have lost. A community requested change to the game is that our tribe members will now have different food preferences. This means that our tribe members will prefer some food types more than others. All tastes are random and individual. There might be some that will skip a meal if the camp does not have any of their preferred foods available. They will however eat what is in camp if they are hungry enough. But roots be damned, they will not like it. A part of the food preference implementation is the adding of starvation avoidance. Your tribe members will now also eat outside the strict mealtimes, but they will only do so if they are so hungry that they might become sick if they do not. If some of your members are close to entering starvation mode, they will go to camp and no matter chore they have and help themselves to food. We only need to guess once who did not want any fish for breakfast. She will however eat when she is properly hungry, just like the kids today. Another change to the game is new leaders wish to honour their predecessors by ruling in their spirit. The ancestral leadership's legacy will endure by the following leaders upholding the traditional rules given to the tribe by the immediate previous leader. This means that when your leader is passing on to the ancestors, the new leader will attempt to equal the policies set by the previous leader. This can of course be changed by you as the player, but your tribe might not like it. And now to something we have all been waiting for, ancient cities now have wild dogs. The wonderful journey to become man's proverbial best friend is thought to have begun as wolves started following ancient hunter-gatherers to scavenge on their leftover scraps of food. This is estimated to have started roughly 33,000 years ago in the southeastern parts of Asia, and the protodog species originated from these wolves eventually came to Europe around 10,000 years ago. We know them today as Canis lupus familiaris. 
The wild dogs look much like the Basenji and the Carolina dog, also known as Dixie Dingo. These wild dogs can be found in various sized packs all over Europe. For now, they cannot be tamed as our tribes has not encountered any migrants with this knowledge. You will be able to see them rather often though, as they are roaming around in the woods near your camp, waiting for their chance to steal your food. They will also, like the boar, eat same types of food that you do, but in much smaller amounts. Ancient Cities continues to expand its repertoire of items to build, also within the fences. We now also have two new types of fences, the wattle fence and the small round pole fence. Even more features and improvements that have been added to the game in patch 2.9.0 can be found on your tribe portraits. We can see the very detailed changes in their portraits, differentiating them from each other with, pending your personal taste, varying levels of beauty. As a last mention in this video, I would like to direct your attention to what is coming very shortly to ancient cities. The roundhouses in this village is surrounded by farms. So hold on to your hats as the farmers are making their way to us. I will also very shortly be making a playthrough video of this patch where I show how all the new additions impact their gameplay and thus also any changes in our playstyle that we as players might need to do in order to continue having successful tribes. I will of course also add a few hints and tips along with a more detailed explanation of the more finicky sides of this patch and all my videos can be found on my YouTube page. That concludes this video explaining the changes and some of the features and fixes in patch 2.9.0. Ancient Cities is a game under development so please continue to provide any feedback and suggestions to the developers on either the Discord server or on the Steam forums. I hope you found the video useful and as usual I will continue to make videos for every new patch in the future explaining all the new additions that has been added to the game. I do hope to see you all next time and until then have fun and take care. Oh, 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 oh.